Hello YouTube, this is Jim again. Got a real treat for you today. We're gonna make a tall bowl out of this largest piece of sisu that I got from my friend who cut down a couple trees. So hang in there with me. The sharp-eyed among you will notice that this bowl was processed on October 8th, 2023, and I am turning this on December 6th. So it's only been drying for about two months, and the size of the bowl and the wetness made it weigh pretty close to 40 pounds, just this one blank, so it's hefty. So as always, I like to work on the corner first to help start shaping the bowl, making it round, and also bring the bowl into balance so that I can eventually turn the speed up and make the turning faster and more pleasurable. So I've got the bottom pretty well flat and start to work on the foot and the tenon. And you can really see the grain that's gonna come out of this. It's a significant amount of figure in here and just the raw beauty of the sisu is just amazing, I love it. So it's right about here that I noticed that all the really cool figure is pretty far out at the edge of the blank on the bottom here. So that's where I decided to keep the bottom really fat and uh, to work the shape from there. Right here is where I decide that I'm pretty much done working on the bottom and I want to kind of make this spittoon shape. You'll see more when I change the angle of the camera here in a minute, but uh, it really is pretty nice. So what I'm doing here is I've got the blank round and I'm scooping out a concave portion to kind of blend the curves from the bottom to the top and have it flare out at the top on the live, live edge.
Now here with this new camera angle, you can definitely see the kind of spittoon type shape that I was mentioning earlier and uh, how the live edge is going to come into that. And also you can really see how that grain is really just going to be amazing. Now if you look at the shape and you see that widest portion of the shape where it kind of changes curvature from convex to concave, that's what's going to give me a lot of trouble in hollowing it out here in a little bit. Um, it's really, really tricky and you'll see what happens. What you see here is me putting some shellac sealer on the bowl because I'm noticing that it's drying even as I'm turning and some really fine cracks are starting to appear. So that's what happens when you work slow and the bowl is wet in Arizona and the water just disappears. So here I'm forming the tenon so that I can flip it around and grip it with my four jaw chuck to do the hollowing. Just trying to make sure that's all nice and trued up and round and dovetailed and ready to go. So here I'm just trying to clean up the surface that I left with the shellac before I had to go to lunch and just kind of clean up the cuts and get it ready for sanding. And once again here I'm using a shellac based sanding sealer as my first coat of finish. And boy does it make that grain pop. Wow, this is the payoff that I always enjoy every time, even though I'm hating the sanding beforehand. If you're enjoying the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe if you're new. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers, I just hit 500 the other day and I want to make YouTube partner and help continue to grow the channel by uh, using the funding to buy more interesting wood and tools and things to show you guys. All right so I got it all finished up on the outside so I'll turn it around here take off the face plate that I was using to hold it on the other way and now it's held in my four jaw chuck so we can hollow it out. This is my favorite part of making bowls is the hollowing process because it's usually in pretty good balance by this point so I can turn the speed up. The outside looks pretty and I can just carve and make the wood disappear. Even at, at real time speeds it's very satisfying and sped up here like I have a lot of the footage. Uh, it's really fun to watch. So if this is your first time seeing me do this, I'm rotating the headstock here so that I can a little more comfortably get the bowl gouge in there. You have to keep the, the bevel of the cutting surface in contact with the wood as you cut. And if I'd kept it the other way, I would have had to reach really far over the bed of the lathe. And it's awkward and uncomfortable. And eventually I, I wouldn't be able to do it. So this allows me to... Um, turn more comfortably and get all the way to the bottom of the bowl without being out of balance.
As you can see here, the remaining bark is just coming off really easy. And this is only two months after the bowl blank was prepared. So the bark on this particular species just doesn't like to stay on. So this is going to be uh, intended to be a natural edge without the bark rather than a live edge. One nice thing about doing a live edge type bowl, as you can see in the footage here, is that the upper wings, they come and go, those high spots. So you'll see high, then low, then high, then low. And as I'm turning, it's like it's flickering like you can see. So I can actually see the bowl gouge running down in there, cutting the wood, even though half of the time it's, it's covered by wood. So... Uh, that actually makes things a little bit easier in turning that type of bowl. Once the gouge is hidden by the wood, then you have to be a little more careful. So if you look carefully, you'll see that my tool is extending pretty far beyond the tool rest at this point. It's four or five inches maybe. Um, and the farther out that gets, the more vibration you get and the more risk you get of getting a catch where the wood grabs the tool, sometimes violently. Um, so you really want that tool rest to be as close as possible to the wood that's getting cut. And here you see it to try and combat that, I've changed my tool rest and I've also switched to some carbide tools which work a little differently than the regular bowl gouge. They go straight into the wood right at the center line of the spinning bowl and it eases the requirement to have the angle of the tool a little bit. So since it was getting so deep um, and I was having trouble with the angles, I, I switched to that to try and make things a little bit easier. Now that was a catch. That's where the wood overwhelmed the cutting edge of the tool and pulled it down, pushing the other end of the tool up uh, pretty violently. It didn't hurt. Gouged the bowl a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. But since I had to keep my hands further back away from the edge of the bowl because of the live edge, didn't want to get hit by that, um, it made hollowing this very difficult with the overhangs and the angles that I had to go for. Got another small catch right there. Really getting nervous about that area that flares out that I'm having a hard time hollowing that I mentioned towards the beginning of the video. So as you can see, I'm keeping my hand, my left hand way back away from the bowl and the tool rest just because I'm pretty gun shy at this point and I don't want it to get trapped in between any of the spinny bits.
So I got that second catch and I went back to the gouge and I realized I was really getting to the limit of my equipment in being able to hollow something this deep. So here's where I try and rotate the headstock further around and use my uh, outboard turning attachment and that didn't really work out. So at this point I was just super nervous. I couldn't get my bowl gouge in there so I had to go back to the carboid and it's given me problems before and it's going to give me more problems. So there it was. Big catch. You could see me checking the depth at the bottom of the big divot that the gouge left in the bottom of the bowl. Still had some wood left, so it was going to be salvageable, but I'm pretty disgusted with the whole affair. So this crack from the catch kind of put an end to the plans for this bowl. I was not going to be able to really make a live edge out of this because there was no way I was going to be able to close that crack with glue or whatever because it was already shrinking and wanted to crack anyway so I had to go to plan B. So I was super frustrated after this. I had high hopes for this bowl and um, so I let it sit for a couple of weeks because I couldn't figure out what to do with it and I was just kind of disgusted with myself. And then I decided you know what I'm just going to get rid of the top of that and came back and turned it again. Unfortunately I don't have footage of that um, because I wasn't sure if it was going to survive. So um, yeah, what you see here is the final product. I was able to get rid of the sapwood most of the way around, repair the cracks, and really make a thin, taller bowl out of this thing. And it came out beautiful. I'm super happy with it. Um, would have liked the other shape, but uh, I was pretty happy with the save. I hope you like it too.